Daisy, and welcome to the very first Does Doug Know, where I ask questions about the week's events to people on the street and people in the studio. Joining us tonight and making up the studio part of the teams, we have four comedy beauties. So, gentlemen, stand up and introduce yourselves, just like you all do at Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> Reese, <laughs> you first. Hello, uh, my name is Reese Thomas. I'm one of the few people on television who's had an operation on their balls. <laughs> it was a cyst, not a grub or a little grout. But a a grub? You can have a grub in your ball? You can. It goes down. It gets down the end sometimes. Shut and, up. Uh, <laughs> if it hadn't, if I hadn't that, it, it would have gone on its own accord. But the doctor said it could get big and form a third bollock. <laughs> and I would have had problems. <laughs> so I had it removed. Next is Gavin. <laughs> Gavin, on your feet. Thank you. Hi, up. My name's Gavin. I uh, live in the east end of Newcastle, Fontaine. Uh, I was there this morning. I was in one of them. Everything for a pound shop and I bought myself a nice house. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Now, on my left are two very handsome chaps. I selected Martin especially because of his boyish good looks. Martin, please stand up and tell us why you're here. Uh, hello, I'm Martin Freeman. I'm here because I know Daisy's boyfriend, and that's a fact. <laughs> oh, my God, I didn't know you knew Bono. Oh, wow. <laughs> Lastly, hi Tony, Hello handsome. There. I'm Tony, and I'm from Alberta, and um, uh, I am the goldfish king. No, that's not it. I, uh, my father has a wig, chest wig, and it's made out of jazz. That's weird. <laughs> Must be lovely in his head. Uh, so there they are, our beautiful studio panelists. Now, teams, you are not alone tonight. Five very kind people have agreed to help you in your quest for victory. I'll show you all of them, but each team only gets to choose one person to play alongside them. Hello, my name's Avon, and this is like this one. Um, I am nihilistically ambivalent. I am a strange character. Everyone thinks that I'm a complete weirdo, and they're generally right. Hello, my name is Anne. I've lived in this country for 10 years. I really feel I fit in quite well with the English eccentric. Also, I'm a member of Mentor, so perhaps that counterbalances my madness. Hi, my name is Priestley. I believe that work is helping the community that you live in and doing something to help your environment. Hola, soy Victoria y soy medio inglesa, medio española. Eh, soy una estudiante en la Universidad de Middlesex. Estudio moda y pienso que debes luchar por lo que crees. My name's Dave, and a word I've been thinking about recently is love. We need to love each other, whether we like it or not. <laughs> Sorry? They have to pick you? I would think you were going to murder me if you did that. <laughs> so, to see who gets to choose, first, I'm going to flip a coin. Martin, you call. Heads, please. Heads it is. You get to choose. Thanks. Sure. I quite like the look of... Well, David. Yes? Yeah, sure. yeah all right. You're all going right. for David? Yeah. 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 Only because yeah. okay. uh, yep. I spent four years in jail with David. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I know how he ticks. <laughs> I'll give yeah, you David. two a chance to choose. Yeah. What about, what about, should we go for, I think Anne looks quite promising I'll to I'll eat the look of Anne myself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you've chosen Anne, you've chosen David, mm -hmm. that leaves Avon, Victoria and Priestley feeling left out and that is on your conscience, not mine. So, round one, it's the opinion round. Reese and Gavin, I asked your teammate Anne for her opinion on a recent story. You get one point if you can tell me what she's on about. Presumably he believes in his bullshit, can I say this? Yes, yes. Um, which is probably the most amazing thing the most amazing amazing thing yeah. that he probably believes that he has won. It's difficult to know what to think about a butcher because at the end of the day that's what he is and a, and a liar and someone who has a very thick skin. Is it uh, Edward Mugabe? <laughs> <laughs> Edward. Mad dog. <laughs> okay, Reese, I'll give you a hundred pounds if you can tell me what his first name is. Oh. Edward Mugabe. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you. Didn't we just get the best people to be on a new show? <laughs> Robert Mugabe. You knew all along, no, Edward. No, he just told me. 
and I'm sorry for that. I just happened to be on his team. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you are right. Anne was talking about the fact that Robert Mugabe has won the election in Zimbabwe. Martin and Tony, same thing for you. For one point, what story does David know? There's a dilemma here because mm. they obviously want to give the information to people that need to protect themselves from the naughty ones. <laughs> if they're going to do these naughty things, they have to uh, educate themselves in ways that will uh, lead to greater success. If a television programme or anybody else provides them with the information, then they'd be fools not to use it. So good luck to them. I didn't say that. No, <laughs> no, no. In the name of Christ, <laughs> why did we choose him? <laughs> he is brilliant. He knows more than anybody else I've ever met. He I does. Think, yeah, I think absolutely. I know. He used to get like this when he had the bottom bunk. <laughs> he would just jabber, jabber, jabber in the night. Um, is it? Hang on. Oh, getting competitive. Is it Go Robert on. Mugabe? <laughs> <laughs> David was in fact referring to the fact that criminals are picking up tricks of the trade from BBC One's Crime Watch. No. Reese and Gavin, read Anne's mind again for another point. What story is she on about here? I can only laugh. I mean, she well deserves it. I perhaps would have chosen another liquid to throw on her. What kind? Oh, I'd have to think about this. Acid would... No! <laughs> oh, you know, um, over the top, perhaps. Is it Will Young? <laughs> Reese. Yeah? Just because he's gay doesn't mean he's a woman. <laughs> kind of. You know, we're all women when we start off at birth, before we're born. That's why we've got nipples. I watched the programme about it. <laughs> the reason why men have got nipples is because when right. you're in the fe when you're in the fetus, is it? The woman. Not when you're in the fetus. When you're in the woman, when you're in the sack before you're born. You're <laughs> in the sack. What happens is that when you're born, you. I don't want to tell you, Miss. Come on. <laughs> That's why men have got nipples because you, your your sex changes. It's not determined at that point. Uh, it's determined that's, that's later. True, yeah, I think so. so yeah. When is it determined? You, well, it, 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 I don't know. When, when I'm the not a gynaecologist. Can't decide what shoes to wear. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a bad action scene. So with therefore, by referring to Will Young as a she. I wasn't actually wrong. I wasn't being. You were referring to Will Young, the fetus. Yes, exactly. And when he was a fetus, he wasn't an Augustus. And what's an Augustus? Augustus Gloop. <laughs> <laughs> Augustus, what's an Augustus Gloop. Gloop? Augustus Gloop, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Where, where did he? Well, how did he meet his end? He got sucked down a uh, uh, tube. No, he got stuck up a tube. Uh, a chocolate shoot. He's shoot. fucking genius. He is. He got stuck up <laughs> a chocolate shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Anne was referring to the story about Britney Spears, who was recently drenched by several buckets of urine. Martin and Tony, mm. for another point, mm. what does David know here? They're pests, aren't they? It's an American import, it's an American invader. <gasps> Our little ones, they've been driven out. Those buggers should go back right, home. they should be on the freaking plate then, shouldn't they? Well... That's one way of getting rid of them. I've never been in a really smart restaurant. Not a really smart restaurant. I don't think they'd have me in the door. Oh, well, they would, but would you want to eat that anyway? I don't think I would, no. So you don't need to go in there, do you? No. No. So why are you asking me this question? I don't know. I just want to know your opinion. All right, OK. Well, you've got my opinion. <laughs> uh, he's talking about uh, they're importing American mice. Right? Tony. And they're oh serving them God. in restaurants. <laughs> and they're... Some of them, what he's mad about, though, if I know him well enough, is that uh, some of them have been trained to play ice hockey at quite a high level. <laughs> and he's thinking, well, that's just water. You're just going to eat them now after all that training. And that's, that's, well, you told me to answer. <laughs> Squirrel. Yeah. Spot on. It is the story of the smart restaurant in the city of London, which is serving great squirrel in a white wine sauce. Sounds lovely. Good work. Do you want that with or without TV? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of round one, Reese, Gavin, and Anne have one point, and Martin, Tony, and David also have one point. <laughs> Now it's the Let's Pretend round. Reese and Gavin, 
Anne and I are doing an impression of something in the news this week. There are two points in offer. One for telling me who we're pretending to be, and one for knowing what the story is. Oh, hello, my good sir. Do you have any perfume? But we must state that we do not carry money with us, but we should like some perfume. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'll deal with this, dear. Um, hello, chinky, chinky, slitty eye. I'd really like to buy some perfume. <laughs> Prince Philip and, and uh, the Queen being racist, um, being racist and wanting to preload in shops. <laughs> I would say that you've got a point for um, mm. guessing the Queen and Prince Philip, but they haven't got the scenario right. What was the scenario we were doing? Airports. Uh, <laughs> duty free. They were trying duty free. And they don't, they don't, they don't carry ca cash, obviously. <laughs> Absolutely right, I'll give him that. The story that we were reenacting was <coughs> the Queen and Prince Philip's recent attempt to be normal by shopping at Singapore Airport. They then boarded a plane where Philip, in a further attempt to be like everybody else, got hammered on Malibu, goose the hostess, and gave the Queen a quick knee trembler in the loo. <laughs> <laughs> Martin and Tony, David and I are performing a news story with a few handy props. What are we doing and who are we being? <laughs> you want your dog back? You leave three thousand pounds in an envelope in a hollow tree by the crossroads. Well, I just pray that you'll bring Rosa back to me. I love her so much and she's got good company for me. Please, Lord, if it's in your will, Return her to me. Oh, Rosa, you're back! <laughs> this is wonderful! Thank you, Lord! Thank you! Wow! <laughs> that was that was, what do you get banged up for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> is it about that very heartwarming story about the, the person who had the, the dog kidnapped? Dognapped, if you will. And, uh, <laughs> it was a priest. That's it, who it, was it was a priest's dog, dog and it got stolen. Priest dog. Okay, I'll give you one point each, because you sort of got that right. That was the story of priest David Lloyd, whose dog Rosa was stolen by thieves. Okay, so then Gavin, Reese, and Anne have three points, and Martin, David and Tony also have three points. <laughs> Here's a quirky little story from the news, and Great. during the break, I'd like you to write an appropriate headline that goes with the following story. Cool. Fruit machine junkies have been selling their bodies outside arcades to fund their habit. Pens at the ready? <laughs> Welcome back to Does Dog Know? Before the break, I asked our panellists to come up with a snappy headline for the story of the slot machine addicts selling their bodies outside arcades to support their habit. So, Gavin, show us what you got when you finish your drink. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, I have got, uh, would you like to hold me plums and go lower than a 12-year-old for a 40-quid jackpot? <laughs> Martin, show us your daily dog. Uh, I've got fruity fruit machine fruits. Come on. <laughs> 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 the next round is word association, which needs no explanation. Sure. Your fellow panellists and I have made a chain of five words. You'll hear the first word and the last word, and you have to give me oh. the three missing words in between. A point for each correct guess. Bruce and Gavin, your turn first. Here are the words Anne and I started and ended with. Bush. <laughs> help. <laughs> so what were the three words that got Anne and I from Bush to help? And uh, little clue, they weren't mother <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh. Bush televisions aren't very good help. <laughs> Bush, Bush videos are cheap, like Alba videos that I got for Christmas. Oh, no, you never. I've got an Alba video for Christmas. Who gave you that? What? My mama. <laughs> and it don't even play forwards. <laughs> Bush. Bush fire. Probably. Yes. Fire. 
Bushfire. Fire. I like that. I wish I was from where you're from. Where is it again? Newcastle. It's um, Denmark. Norway. Uh, <laughs> I, my idea was Bush, Beaver, <laughs> Arcala, Fiddle, <laughs> Help. Engine trouble. Engine trouble. Engine trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if your answers are right. Bush. Fire. Engine. Trouble. Help. Yeah, yeah. Martin and Tony, same thing for you. Here's David and I in action. You'll hear the first and last words only. Uh, Winona. Dwarf. <laughs> so, what were the three words that got us from Winona to Dwarf? Winona, Rider, Storm. <laughs> Dwarf. Cloud. Dwarf! <laughs> Winona. You've actually got inside his head, haven't you, in a way? <laughs> in a Jeez. way. Um, Winona, Shaplet. Yeah, we're only shoplifting. I'll give you a clue, that's not the right word. Stealing. We're theft. Nearly. Whore. <laughs> we know that. What's she been <clears throat> with? Johnny Depp. <laughs> Okay, to uh, help you along, yeah, I'll help you along a little bit. Um, it's word. electric. Oh, no. now it's becoming clear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've run out of time. Let's have a look at what the answers are. Uh, Winona. Charge. Electric. Short. Dwarf. <laughs> Winona, in charge. Okay, so the scores there are Martin's team have three, Reese's team have six. <laughs> the last round is called Zeitscheit, which I think is a German word. Uh, in this round, we test our team's knowledge of images, slogans, characters and stories that have captured our imaginations this week. It's an open round in which everyone can play. First person to stand up and answer correctly wins a point. And for an extra point, predict, do Anne or David know? If you get the opening question wrong, it automatically gets thrown to the other team. You've got two minutes on the clock, everything can change. Let's start now. If my name's Will and I can sing, what have I just come out of? You don't have to buzz as well. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. The closet. Absolutely right. For an extra point, does David know? You know what? I don't think he does. <laughs> he used to talk an awful lot about Led Zeppelin. <laughs> the guy who listens to Led Zeppelin doesn't know what's going on. Uh, how I think. <laughs> That's two points. Thanks. Uh, who is Louis Farrakhan? Uh, oh. No, don't buzz! <laughs> I'm taller. He stood up first. Oh. <laughs> He's the leader of the Nation of Islam. Absolutely right. For an extra point, oh, does David know? Oh, does yeah, know? surely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, he's the uh, leader of the Nation of Islam. Yeah. Absolutely right. Another two points for you there. Um, what group of people did Prince Charles call... Yeah, what group of char what group of what? <laughs> what group of people did, did, um, I have to warn you that I will pass this over straight no, away if you get this wrong, Reese, and you buzzed in too soon. The press. Calling quirk. The press are awkward. Yeah, um, for an extra point though, does Anne know? Yeah. Yeah. She's meant so, isn't she? Yeah. The Parliament. <laughs> no, she didn't know, but it was a good job you didn't pick Priestley, because this is what he said. What group of people did Prince Charles yesterday call awkward, cantankerous, cynical, bloody-minded, at times intrusive, at times inaccurate, and at times deeply unfair? Aborigines. 
<laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> if you said, oh, no. wash your fucking piss-stained hands before you shake mine, you <laughs> who are you? Uh, I'll g keep buzzing, go on. Okay, um, style. I've got an answer. Go for it. Your mum. No! <laughs> No, uh, not that. Not that. I'm just going to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass that over to you. Bernard Matthews. <laughs> We're talking about turkeys. <laughs> you got that wrong. Uh, no, they both got it wrong. Uh, Russell Crowe in a toilet to an over-enthusiastic fan is the oh, answer. Oh, no. He's nice. <laughs> um, who was asked, how does it feel to be America's blowjob queen? It's, it's me first. Was it you? Look, yeah. Was. I you didn't even look. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, um, Dad. <laughs> it, that's uh, Monica Lewinsky. Absolutely right. For an extra point, does Anne know? But she's bone too, yeah. <laughs> Freddie Mercury. <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's why um, it's taken away, is it? Um, who was Frank Kane talking about when he said Foxy Expression, a lovely bone, captivating in the big ring? She really is a gorgeous bitch. <laughs> She's talking about crafts. Absolutely right, well, Reese. No. For an extra point, does Anne know? No. 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 Caprice. <laughs> you got two points, you predicted right. Why did the Queen brandish a knife in her clenched fist this week? She likes Whitland. <laughs> <laughs> Time is up, that's it. So, at the end of tonight's show, it's a beautiful action, Tony. So, at the end of tonight's show, the final scores are Tony, David, and Martin have eight, and the winners are Reese, Gavin, and Anne with ten. <laughs> Disappear, panellists, in this age of spin, let's see if you can turn a piece of bad news into a little ray of sunshine. Find the silver lining in the following clouds. A man was ordered to defrost his dead parents and bury them properly. The good news is? The good news is there's plenty of room in the freezer now for all those alphabites. <laughs> I love that. Pardon, Tony, spin on this. One in four male teenagers carries a knife. Well, the good news is, Whittling's back in fact. <laughs> it just cool. remains for me to say thank you to Gavin, Reese, and Anne, Martin, David, and Tony. That was just Doug No. My name's Trevor MacDonald. Good night. <laughs>